Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the thriller suspense films from 2022, titled The Weekend Away. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The film opens with the floating body of a young woman in the ocean, suggesting either an accident or some other cause of death. The scene then shifts to a few days prior, when a woman named Beth catches a taxi ride from Zane, a driver sent by her friend, Kate. The friends are at their two weekend getaway in Croatia, and Beth is visiting the country for the first time. After dropping her off, Zane kindly hands her his card in case she needs assistance during her stay. Later, Kate warmly welcomes Beth and takes her to their deluxe Airbnb, which she booked using her ex-husband Jay's credit card without his knowledge. Grateful for Kate's efforts in organizing their trip, Beth presents her with a special necklace, adorned with black onyx stones. As they share a heartfelt hug, we see Kate's smile fading as if she is hiding something. Later in the evening, while getting ready for dinner, Beth has a video call with her husband, Rob, and daughter Aster. Kate then hands Beth her first glass of alcohol, and asks Rob how things are going. Rob says everything is fine, and tells the girls to have a fun night, before ending the video call. As they make their way outside, they come across Sebastian, the peculiar owner of the Airbnb, who greets Beth warmly and extends his wishes for a comfortable stay. Over dinner, Kate orders the most expensive dishes on purpose to drain Jay of all his money. Here it is revealed that Beth and Rob's marriage is going through a challenging phase, lacking the excitement it once had. Kate suggests Beth should consider getting a divorce, but Beth remains hopeful they can work things out. Moments later, while Kate is engrossed in a phone call, scolding the caller to leave her alone, Beth receives news from the waiter that their card has been declined. When Kate returns to the table, she reveals that Jay was on the call, and he has learned that she was using his money. Without wasting time, the friends settle the bill using cash, and proceed to the club, traveling in Zane's taxi. During this time, Beth discovers Zane's background as a Syrian, who fled his war-torn country, while Beth is an American living in London. Inside the club, Kate strikes up a conversation with two men, intending to invite them back to her Airbnb. Despite Kate's intentions, Beth, being married, decides against spending the night with one of the men. However, Kate persistently urges her to reconsider. As the night progresses, the men offer them drinks, and the next thing Beth knows, she wakes up the following morning in her bed, with only fragmented memories of the previous night. To Beth's horror, her friend is nowhere to be found in the house. She notices Kate's dress on the bench, and the jacuzzi still running, heightening her concern. The discovery of broken glass and blood on the floor intensifies Beth's unease, signaling something is amiss. Beth spends the entire morning attempting to reach Kate via phone, to no avail, so she vents her concerns to Rob. The husband says Kate is probably out on her own, and asks if they had an argument. Kate says they didn't, although her memories are fuzzy about it. Beth continues her search by questioning the owner Sebastian about Kate's whereabouts. The situation takes a darker turn for Beth, when Sebastian demands additional money for the two male guests who had stayed the night. Fearing that these men might be involved, Beth heads straight to the police station. There, she encounters Officer Povich, who not only fails to offer assistance, but also mocks her, suggesting that the drunk Kate might have abandoned her for other men. However, a more helpful officer named Kovic enters the room, and begins questioning Beth upon seeing her distress. Despite Kovic's willingness to help, Povich insists on handling the case alone. Since it hasn't been 24 hours since Kate's disappearance, Beth is unable to file an official missing persons report, leaving her with no option but to take matters into her own hands. After leaving the police station, the woman decides to contact Zane, and inquire about the club. Learning of Kate's disappearance, Zane promptly takes Beth to the club, allowing her to conduct her investigation. When the bartender denies any knowledge of the men or even Beth's presence the previous night, Zane confronts the bartender, who eventually reveals that the men in question are Matteo and Luca, escorts who frequent the club and entertain tourists. Here Beth guesses Kate must have hired them because she kept insisting Beth needed to get out of her rut. When Beth calls Rob again in the evening, he tells her that Kate ditching her to hang out with guys is just like her, so she shouldn't worry. Because Kate hasn't responded to any messages, Beth is still convinced that something happened to her, 
so she cancels her flight for the following day, determined to locate her friend rather than abandon her in this difficult time. The next day, she searches the name of the club on social media, and fortunately finds the escorts. Beth then asks Zane for help arranging a meeting with them. While waiting for their arrival, she opens up to Zane about her friendship with Kate, and how she met Rob through her, and Zane tells Beth about the wife he lost to the war. As they engage in conversation, the escorts suddenly appear and, instantly recognizing Beth's face, flee from the scene in a hurry. Luckily, Zane manages to apprehend one of the escorts, who confesses to being hired by Kate, but remains unaware of her current whereabouts. The reason for his initial escape was his theft of Kate's bag that night. Beth questions whether she was drugged that night, but the man denies any involvement in such actions. Wasting no time, Beth recovers Kate's bag and phone from a pawn shop, but she still thinks the escort slipped something in her drink. Since Beth's bag wasn't also stolen by the escort, Zane thinks that Kate might have been the one to drug Beth, but Beth believes that Kate would never intentionally harm her. Deciding to seek assistance from the cops, Beth approaches the police station and agrees not to mention Zane's name to protect his visa status. She files another missing person report, this time with Officer Kovac, who have to file Beth's report again, and scolds Povich for not doing his job. Frustrated by Povich's earlier negligence, Kovac instructs him to run the names of the escorts through the police system. She then inquires about the expensive branded bag Beth retrieved, so Beth fabricates a story about threatening the escort to return the bag. Kovac wonders if Beth could have been assaulted, so she orders a medical checkup for Beth, with the results expected to be available within 24 hours. Desperate for any leads on Kate's whereabouts, Beth reaches out to Jay, who just like Rob, thinks this is Kate just being her dramatic self, and that she frequently disappears. He reveals that he hasn't had any recent contact with Kate, which contradicts the fact that Kate spoke to him on the night of their dinner. Beth becomes confused by the discrepancy, but Jay remains persistent in his statement, saying that any communication between them was going through their lawyers. Amidst her distress, Beth discovers Sebastian in her room, packing her belongings, as her allotted stay at the accommodation has come to an end. Because of her ongoing worries about Kate's disappearance, he kindly offers her a smaller room inside his residence at a reduced cost, which Beth readily accepts. After plugging in Kate's dead phone to charge, she eventually falls asleep. Upon awakening during the night, Beth finds Kate's phone locked with a facial recognition feature. As she steps out of her room, she encounters Sebastian again, who continues to exude an odd demeanor, and reveals that he is a composer and has a recording studio within the house. After Sebastian expresses his desire to have dinner with Beth, she decides to leave the premises in search of Kate, with the assistance of Zane. But before she can depart, Beth receives an unexpected visit from Rob, who had traveled all the way from London after being unable to reach her for a day. With Zane's departure, Beth becomes engaged in a heated argument with Rob, who scolds her for placing trust in a taxi driver. However, witnessing Beth's distress, Rob calms her down and attentively listens to the unfolding story. In the midst of their conversation, Beth receives a phone call from the police station that delivers a devastating blow. Kate's lifeless body has been discovered in the ocean, and Beth is unable to hold back her tears upon identifying the body of her dear friend. The authorities need an autopsy before deciding if it was an accident or murder. The next morning, Rob feels bad for not having been nicer to Kate because he found her annoying. He also wonders if he should stay longer, but Beth prefers him to go back to London to take care of their daughter while she finishes things here. After a day, the autopsy report confirms that Kate was indeed murdered. With tears in her eyes, Beth implores Officer Povich to allow her a final farewell with Kate. While Povich waits outside, Beth seizes the opportunity to unlock Kate's phone using the face recognition feature. Once unlocked, she retreats to the restroom, desperately searching for any potential evidence. As Beth delves into the call logs, she discovers multiple missed calls from a contact named Handyman. You've reached Rob. Leave me a message after. She is left utterly shocked when Rob's voice greets her on the voicemail, and so she turns her attention to the text messages, and it is revealed that Rob and Kate had been in a relationship for months. Kate's last messages are curious. First, she asks Rob to dump Beth, but then she asks him to stop texting her. Beth's state of disbelief is interrupted by the sudden arrival of Officer Povich, causing her to drop Kate's phone, resulting in a shattered screen. At the police station, Beth receives distressing news from Officer Kovac. 
The autopsy report reveals elevated levels of illegal substances in both Beth's and Kate's systems. The authorities have also questioned the escorts, but they denied using those substances in their job, and they had solid alibis for the time of the murder. A taxi driver picked them up at Beth's apartment. People at the club said they saw Beth and Kate arguing, but Beth denies it, even if she isn't totally sure. Compounded by the inconsistencies in her statements, the police suspect Beth of being involved in Kate's murder. Beth is informed that she cannot leave the country until her statements have been thoroughly verified. When Povich drives her back, he takes Beth's passport, and leaves Sebastian his card. Seeking answers and confirmation, Beth calls Jay, and inquires about Kate's affair. To her surprise, Jay knew about the affair all along, but he kept quiet as Beth was pregnant at the time. The truth finally sinks in for Beth, and she finds solace in sharing her pain and suspicions with Zane, revealing her growing belief that Kate may have drugged her to create a rift between her and Rob, ultimately leading to the accusation of infidelity. After a tearful and cathartic session with Zane, Beth retreats to her room, and calls Rob to confront him about his relationship with Kate. Fearing the loss of Beth and their daughter Aster, Rob pleads for forgiveness, claiming that the affair meant nothing. Consumed by anger, Beth realizes that if the police were to discover Rob's affair, they would have a strong motive to suspect her of Kate's murder. Beth's world shatters as Officer Kovac arrives at her house, ready to arrest her for Kate's murder. The case against her becomes stronger when it is revealed that Zane, the taxi driver and seemingly helpful friend, is actually a member of an Albanian gang involved in various criminal activities, including human trafficking. The police suspect that Zane carried out Kate's murder under Beth's orders due to Rob's affair with Kate. Overwhelmed and confused, Beth struggles to comprehend Zane's involvement in the case, and how the police discovered the affair. She hires a lawyer who manages to secure her temporary release due to the lack of evidence. Upon returning home, she is shocked to find Zane in her room, who got in because Sebastian let him. The police had to release him as his driving records showed he was on duty all night during the time of the murder. Zane also opens up about how he saved a young boy's life, but the boy's father had connections to an Albanian people smuggling ring, and he helped Zane escape his country, cross borders and secure a visa, but he doesn't work for the gang. Later that day, consumed by thoughts of how the police discovered Rob's affair, she remembers that Pavic gave Sebastian his card. Beth begins scouring the premises, and eventually uncovers a hidden camera cleverly placed within a mirror, which probably recorded her conversation with Jay and Rob. Curiosity compels her to steps out of her room, and secretly steal Sebastian's studio keys. As the mysterious man departs from the house, Beth ventures inside his private studio, and sees multiple monitors. Shockingly, she discovers that Sebastian has secretly installed cameras in the whole building, including the washrooms, revealing his perverted self. As she peruses the footage, Beth finally witnesses the events of the murder night. Astonishingly, it unfolds that due to excessive intoxication, she was placed on the bed by Kate, who then proceeded to have fun with the boys on the balcony. As soon as she got distracted, the boy stole Kate's bag and discreetly departed the house. Son of a bitch! Upon discovering the theft, Kate promptly took action and accidentally got a glass shattered, leaving her with a bleeding wound on her foot. Without caring much about it, she left the house to chase after the boys in a taxi. Later, she returned home in a different vehicle, venting her frustration at someone. While Beth writes the license plate numbers, Sebastian's arrival startles her. She quickly slams the door into his head to escape the premises, and so Sebastian explains that the camera system is a security measure, because people do awful things while renting, but Beth remains unconvinced. Sebastian attempts to delete the evidence while Beth intervenes, resulting in Sebastian toppling backwards, making him unconscious for a moment. Beth then takes his keys, and after making her getaway, Beth encounters Zane outside, who then escorts her to the taxi station, in order to uncover Kate's whereabouts on that fateful night. Using the crucial information about the vehicle's number plates, Beth and Zane track down the taxi driver, who reveals that he took Kate to the police station after losing sight of the men they were following. Beth doesn't understand this because the cops didn't have a report of her stolen bag, and then she remembers that Pavic didn't file her report either. Unfortunately, Beth's face is now displayed in the news as a murder suspect, prompting a local resident to alert the police. As Pavic's car approaches, Beth has a startling realization, it's the same vehicle Kate returned in. Evading the authorities, Beth and Zane seek refuge in an abandoned building, where she confides her suspicions about Pavic. While Zane diverts the attention of the police, Beth makes a daring escape, 
intending to contact her lawyer. However, midway, Pavic sees her and follows her to the top of a building, where she is apprehended. Beth accuses him of killing Kate, because Kate turned him down when he made advances toward her that night after getting her report. Pavic attempts to assault her, right when Kovac intervenes. This leads to his fatal fall from a significant height, ultimately resulting in his demise. After a few days, Officer Kovac concludes her investigation, and offers an apology to Beth for wrongfully accusing her of the murder. The CCTV footage reveals that Pavic dropped Kate at the apartment, and later, there's a man near the sea pushing Kate into the water. The autopsy results indicate that Pavic struck her on the head, and he subsequently disposed of her still living body in the harbor. Pavic used to work in the vice unit, and many female street workers had claimed he assaulted them, but during the investigation, the women retracted their statements, probably because Pavic threatened them. Since he couldn't be fired, he had been moved to the tourist division. They've also searched the escort's apartment and found the illegal substances, because it turns out it's true that they intoxicated women in order to rob them. With tears welling in her eyes, Beth retrieves her passport and shares a final heartfelt embrace with Zane, expressing gratitude for his unwavering support and empathy. Days pass, and Beth remains in contact with Zane, who has become her best friend. Moreover, she and Rob are no longer together, but Rob yearns for another chance, and Beth is not ready to let him hurt her again. While dropping off Aster at Rob's place, Beth searches for her car keys, but stumbles upon something that shakes her to her core. In Rob's pocket, she discovers one of the black onyx stones from Kate's necklace, leading her to suspect that he may be the culprit. Filled with fear and shock, she immediately calls Officer Kovic, intending to reveal everything. However, before she can disclose the whole story, Rob interrupts, and inquires about what's happening. This is the moment when Beth finally confronts him about Kate's murder. Initially in denial, Rob eventually confesses that it was an accident, and he flew to Croatia to meet with Kate. He justifies his actions, claiming he intended to prevent her from revealing the truth about their relationship. Since she had been unresponsive to his calls, he felt compelled to confront her in person. Rob explains that Kate told him that she was in love with him, begging him to leave Beth. But as Rob presents his explanations, a parallel narrative unfolds, revealing the actual events of the murder night. In an attempt to make Kate acknowledge his love, Rob tried to talk to her, longing for her to respond to his feelings. The reality was that Kate wanted to end their relationship since she regretted it. She decided she would tell Beth the truth, which triggered Rob to strike her in a fit of rage, causing Kate's necklace to break. Consequently, Kate fell onto the rocks, hitting her head, and subsequently plunging into the water. Rob begs Beth not to tell the police since the case is closed, but it's too late, Beth has had Kovac on the line all this time and she heard everything. As Rob turns his aggression towards Beth, she swiftly incapacitates him with a forceful kick to the groin, rendering him harmless. The movie concludes with Beth departing from the house with Aster, seeking safety, while police cars are seen approaching to apprehend Rob for the murder of Kate. Okay guys, that's all the recap of the Weekend Away 2022. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.